Welcome to CivilNet. We have a very special guest here in our studio. She's an actor, filmmaker, a curator of a very unique film festival, and a good friend of CivilNet, Nora Armani. Nora, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having me back. It's yeah, really a pleasure. And it's really nice to have you in person as opposed to yes, our Skype interviews. Yes, Skype. <laughs> uh, you are in Armenia taking part in uh, something that's very special and close to your heart and something that uh, that is part of your world, your life. Um, you're starring in a play, uh, actually the lead role in a play called Mercedes, mm -hmm. um, uh, and the premiere was last night. Yep. Talk to us, what is the play about? Well, it's about a period of Armenian, modern Armenian history that we haven't really, it has, hasn't been very much documented or spoken about. It's the major repatriations at the, in the late 40s uh, into Armenia. It was, I think, as a result of some um, initiative that Stalin took, saying that any republic, Soviet republic, that had a population of under a million was going to be adjunct to the next door republic. And of course, Mikoyan, who was in the government at the time, he said, well, why don't we open the roads for immigration? Who would have thought that all these people were going to come and live behind the Iron Curtain? Yeah, it's, it's a fascinating story, isn't it? Yes. But we have to remember that they were, they were the survivors. They were the survivor Absolutely. generation. They were the survivor generations who had taken refuge in various communities around the world, specifically the Middle Eastern countries. And then this was an opportunity for them to go and live in the homeland, in the country. A lot of them were overcome with incredible patriotic feelings and they left behind everything a lot of wealth some of them were very wealthy people and just just took the first boat out or whatever they came to Armenia and it wasn't all beautiful yeah. and green and everything milk and honey, as, milk it and was, honey as it was presented as they were yeah. yes absolutely and I think it's really important that you know now 60 years later we're finally talking about this more openly. I mean, it wasn't something that, pe that people talked about too much, of course, within their families. And I think even for those of us who grew up in the diaspora, we were all affected by it because we invariably had a relative. Totally, every single diaspora person has some relative, close or yeah, less not so close, close or whatever, who repatriated during that time. It, my personal experience goes through my um, paternal grandmother's family, mm. and also from my father's side, my, my uh, grandfather's side. Yeah. They both had people who came. So this, this play, Mercedes, explores that story um, of a family of two sisters uh, from Greece, and one decides to move to Armenia. And um, before we talk about the plot and, and, and the message of the, of the play, if there is a message, uh, how did you come to be involved as a diaspora Armenian uh, <laughs> well, actor? Well, my relationship with Armenia goes quite far back. Um, basically, as a child, I came to the pioneer yeah. <laughs> jumpers and camps and the summer camps from school. And then um, there were other occasions. At the time, there was the uh, committee for uh, cultural relations with Armenians abroad. Mm. <laughs> And through that, I have been invited several times for my theatrical activities and uh, in the world. And, but the real turning point was in 1991, at just before the independence actually, January 1991, in the middle of the curfew times and all the... Cold and freezing. Exactly, no electricity, everything else yeah. what that was happening in Armenia when I was invited to star in a feature film directed by Ara Yerenjakian of the Camera in Tadron. Right, right, right. And it was called Jamge de Yot or Deadline in Seven Days. In, it was a very particular period because for the first time I was coming to Armenia to actually work here mm -hmm. as opposed to just come as a tourist, mm -hmm. albeit invited for my activities, but still sure. as a tourist. Mm -hmm. And I stayed two months Oh, I was January 91. To, yes, I was supposed to be here just four weeks to do the, the film, and we did finish the film in that period of time, but I personally wanted to stay longer, and I ended up staying until March. And it was an amazing period, cold, of course, no heat, no electricity. I remember evenings when we would just wrap around everything that was in the suitcase just so we would not freeze to death. But. Um, 
it was also a very particular period because despite all those difficulties and the lack of food, the lack of um, petrol, the lack of heating or electricity, people had a spark in their eyes, a spark of hope towards the future because it was a change, period of change. So then you, you've been back and forth. Back and forth since then. I came back in 92 to do another film, 93, uh, uh, still a third film, uh, with Haruchun Khachatrian, with Mikhail Dovlatian. And it's so funny, the other night we went to Araig's uh, opening night, mm -hmm. and suddenly three of the directors that I had worked with were, were all there. there. <laughs> and we took a picture together. Yeah. That's what Armenia on is. It really Facebook. is a meeting yeah, point. For, absolutely. Yeah. And, um, it was very, very interesting period. Um, then I went away and I didn't come back for 14 years. Grung, Ustigu It was time to sing for Grung. And 2007, I came back for a family reason. And it reopened the doors. 2008, I came back to direct a Saroyan play here for the centenary. 2009, to do another play for the genocide with Armen Jigarhanian etc. And then uh, last one, last trip just before this one was in 2011 when I came to do a master class at the National Stu um, Drama and Cinematography Institute. So since 2011 you haven't I been haven't back? I haven't been back. And so you came back and ha so they reached out to you to be part of the play? Yes. Hago Pazanchian, who is the director and he is the artistic director of the National Youth Theatre where we are performing. Mm -hmm. And he is also the president of the Theatre Union mm -hmm. um, of uh, Armenia. Uh, he knows me, he knew me from a very long time ago and we've always wanted to work together but of course the opportunity. A few years ago, he had a, pro a project, but it kind of didn't yeah, pan you know, out. Yeah, and then this one was like, oh my God, this I have to do this one. <laughs> so. so they sent you the script. The script was written by a young playwright, Anush Aslibekian. That's right. So they send you the script, and yes. so the, 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 the troupe had been practicing before you came, and then you came in and right. so you had to practice with right. them for a few days well, before the Well, he staged everything and that's the luxury of having a repertory theater, which I was telling them, I said, you don't know what you have in your hands. Right. Because even in New York, you know, the rehearsals are not transported to the main stage right. until the last week or the last few days even sometimes mm. because it's too expensive to rent the theater and do the rehearsals there. Mm. So a lot of the times uh, the rehearsals are done in a rehearsal room right. and then all the technical stuff and lights and sound and everything together. and set and everything are brought together. Mm. Whereas here it's like the designer is um, in-house, the right. set is already there, the lighting is just you know available. We don't appreciate oftentimes what no, we have, right? exactly. It's so important. And uh, they had been rehearsing everything. Everything was, there was even a stand-in, an oh. actress who had learned all the lines. In case something up. No, not really in case, but she was helping with the staging. Mm -hmm. So when I came, the first one, Hagop said, okay, you sit down and watch. No kidding. Yes. Uh -huh. And I was making notes. Okay, at this point I go here, at that point I go there. And then, of course, once I know what I'm doing, I make it my own, and then it's my own contribution that comes in. So what is the story? If you could very briefly tell us what the story well, is the about. Well, the story is about uh, two sisters, Mercedes and Zaruhi, uh, who are in Greece from Thessaloniki, and then one of them, who is more idealistic and patriotic, that's my character, mm. who decides that she wants to immigrate to Armenia in 1948. Whereas Mercedes, who is a little more mature and set in, mm. she says, wake up, look around you, we're just out of the war. Mm. How do you think overnight situation would be brilliant there? Don't go. She really urges her sister not to go, but of course the, the sister just decides to take off and she arrives in Armenia. At the beginning she's all excited and starry-eyed and you know, she opens a um, uh, sewing uh, workshop and starts ma making um, adjustments, mending clothes or, or really actually creating new designs and stuff like that, new creations. And she becomes quite known within the city. Mm -hmm. um, and then slowly things happen. 
So I suspect that Zarui then goes through the stages of Armenia with her own life. Yes, that's yeah. the idea. And that's all shown in the play. Right, we do. We go, it's, of course it happens very quickly because mm, yeah. otherwise we'd be here three days. And <laughs> <laughs> or 30 years. <laughs> or 30 years or trying to give each period its worth. Um, she gets married and then 1953 comes and Stalin dies and the situation changes a little bit and then early 60s a, lo a lot more changes, uh, Beatles and new <laughs> cafes and things and we kind of uh, follow yeah. all these changes through her character and what she's going through. And it follows her way into the independence. It's so all the way until 1991. All the way into 1991. Okay. And then you will be playing again tonight and yes. hopefully one more show before you have to head yes. back. Yes, we are trying to see if we can add a third show right. because everybody wants to see it and mm. there aren't enough tickets. Um, tonight is the second night, uh, which is still considered here a premiere, I mm -hmm. thought, you know. And um, we are going also to perform in Gyumri oh, okay. on the 7th. That's great, yeah, yes. very good. And then, uh, and then I go back, then you unfortunately. Go back. But the idea is that they will invite me back mm -hmm. whenever it's time to put it on back on, on, the, on stage. the stage. Yeah. Well, Nora, thank you so much for, I, and I know you have to head now to the theater to get ready for your show. Um, thank you for, for telling us the story and um, just to remind our viewers that you are a festival organiz organizer for something called Socially Relevant Film Festival, which we talked about last year. And uh, you're doing yeah. a lot of important work for... We just wrapped our second year, yeah. actually, and uh, we did uh, 53 films from uh, 33 countries this oh, year. Very impressive. In more than one venue. And we also had workshops this year, which we didn't have last year. So now we're in the process of preparing year three. <laughs> so. Very good. Well, I hope to see you back in Armenia again Thank very soon. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here and it's really, I'm feeling sad because I have to go back in yeah. such a short time. Oh, well, you can it's stay, true. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Something like the character that you play in your exactly. own. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking about it and I said, what a pleasure it is to be performing in your own mother tongue. Of course, and it's yeah. just a completely different experience. I'm sure, I'm sure. So thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was actor, filmmaker, uh, festival organizer, Nora Armani. Stay with CivilNet.